Hi, I'm Matt Williams and welcome to Soil Lab. Really excited for today's video. We're going to be doing our one month update on our pH adjustment trial that you see in front of me here. Hopefully you had the time to watch our intro video and if you haven't, go and check it out. It's going to give you a really good overview of the study and just how we got it set up. To give you that 10,000 foot view of what we have going here, we have four unique soils ranging from very acidic all the way to very basic and we're going to be putting numbers to each of those experiments today. So here on the left, we have our very acidic soil. Now, how did we sample this? For each of these trays, we laid a randomized grid over it and took six soil samples. From those six samples, we made a composite and then we sent those off to the lab. Well, right across the way here. We sent those across the way and we ran three unique soil tests out of each of these trays. So the data that I'm going to be delivering to you today represents 60 individual soil tests and this is a replicated study. Well, why do we care about that? Well, we ran statistics on this, and so I'll be telling you what results are statistically significant and which might be insignificant. So they're all going to be significant unless I tell you otherwise, and that's what I'd like to get started with now is looking at this data that's going to help you drive decisions in the home lawn and the home garden. So here we are in our very acidic soil. And this tray over here that's all on its own, it was an untreated control. So that really means that this is our baseline. And that starting point was 4.28. That's very, very acidic, below that optimal range. So we wanna bring that soil pH up. So what did we treat it with? Well, we treated it with 40 and 80 pounds per thousand of lime, and we tried 40 and 80 pounds per thousand square feet of dolomitic lime. Now, you'd use the dolomitic lime if you needed magnesium as well. Well, what did we learn? Well, we learned that at 40 pounds per thousand square feet of dolomitic lime that we saw the pH increase significantly up to about 4.53. When we bumped that rate up to 80 pounds, we saw a further increase with the dolomitic lime all the way up to 4.9, and that's just in a month. It's going to be really interesting to see what this looks like four months from now. With our calcitic lime, we saw further pH increases. So from that 4.28 starting point, all the way up to 4.8 at our low rate, and over five and a half with that high rate. So we're creeping up closer to that optimal range. Again, that was a single application and just one month. So we moved the needle with both calcitic lime and dolomitic lime. We're moving in the right direction. Now let's move over to our acidic soil. This had a little bit higher starting pH, than the one we just discussed. The starting pH here in our acidic soil was actually right at about 6.06. .06. So we used the same treatments here as we used here. So 40 and 80 pounds of, per thousand square feet of uh, calcitic lime and 40 and 80 pounds per thousand of dolomitic lime. Again, we saw increases with the dolomitic lime going from 6.06 .06 all the way up to over six and a half and almost six and three quarters. And with the calcitic lime, the same trends uh, held true as with our other soil, increasing to 6.67 and even all the way up to 7.13 with that high rate of that calcitic, so, uh, calcitic lime. Now, would I apply 80 pounds per thousand of calcitic lime to my lawn? Probably not. That's a lot. So that's going to be more of our garden rate pre-plant. Um, the 40 pound per thousand rate is more of a turf grass rate. So our acidic soils move the needle in the right direction on all of them with all amendments and rates. Now let's go ahead and move over to our basic and very basic soils. All right, so our first two soils, we saw movement in the correct direction. Those were very acidic and acidic and we moved that pH up. Those both also happen to be medium textured soils, meaning they had a lot of silt and a little bit of sand and clay. This soil is a little different in pH as well as texture. So the pH here, again on our untreated control, is right below 7.5, so 7.49. This also happens to be a little bit sandier soil. Now when we applied our elemental sulfur at 4 and 8 pounds per thousand, we saw a reduction in pH. When we applied citric acid at 2 and 4 pounds per thousand, we also saw a reduction in pH, just not quite as uh, much as we saw with the elemental sulfur. So again, we saw that uh, the 4 pound per thousand rate of elemental sulfur move from 7.49 down to just above neutral at 
and we actually dropped with the higher rate of elemental sulfur at 8 pounds per thousand, dropped into that acidic pH range at 6.85. So getting really near that optimal pH value for maximum nutrient availability. Again, that's just in one month on this sandy soil. We also saw good directional movement at the, at the two and four pound uh, per thousand square feet rates, dropping from 749 to between 7.2 and 7.3 uh, with the citric acid. Again, that was a single application over one month. If we move now to this very basic soil, this was our highest starting pH and the one we expected to be most challenging um, to adjust. Our very basic soil starting pH was at 8.36, so that's really up there. So we use the same treatments here as we did in the sandy soil. This one happens to be more medium textured as well. So we applied four and eight pounds per thousand of elemental sulfur and the same two and four pounds per thousand of citric acid. Now, up to this point, all of our differences between treatments have been statistically significant. Well, we didn't quite see that here in this high pH trial. So we saw that our range of pH values was 8.31 to 8.39, and our starting pH was 8.36. So when we ran the analysis, again, with replication, three replications from each of these trays, we saw that really there's not a statistical difference right now and even the numerical difference is pretty low. But again, we need to remember that this elemental sulfur might take time to react in the soil, and so I'm really looking forward to the results from this, um, this individual soil over the next several months. We'll be doing monthly update videos of this, and again, looking forward to those changes that we see in this high pH 8.36 soil. What are some of the main takeaways from today? Well, one, we've got our data rolling, and it should be helping you drive your decisions in your lawn and your garden. What decisions might you be able to make from today's video? Well, maybe we can see that calcitic and dolomitic lime are both going to help our pHs come up. We saw the calcitic lime acted a little bit more rapidly, but we'd probably choose that dolomitic lime if we needed magnesium as well. What did we learn from our sandy soil? It was a little bit more rapid uh, to reduce the pH than uh, the one in front of me here, the very basic soil. But both the elemental sulfur and the citric acid did drive that so, uh, soil pH down, the elemental sulfur more so. From this soil, we've, we learned that patience is sometimes going to be key, and this directional movement may take time, and I hope that that's what we see over the next several months. All right, so now that we've wrapped up our one month update video, what should you expect from this trial in the future? Well, we're gonna do two, three, and four month pH update videos with each of these soils as we move through time. And at that month four, we're also gonna compare nutrient availability from day one of the trial to the end of the trial. We know that as pH changes, so does nutrient availability, and that's what we're gonna be able to look at and evaluate at the end of this trial. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the lab.